Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand on our feet for just... Huh? I know. So time flies when you're having fun and really, really, really flies when you're in the Lord's presence. So I know it's, uh, you know, most of the time after praise and worship, we're, uh, we're kind of fired up and stirred up and shouting and hollering. Now this is kind of a little bit different, right? We're kind of, oh, which is good. In his presence, there is, there's joy and there's some, a lot of times it's just peace. It's peaceful in this place right now. So let's just lift our hands. And let's get a little bit rowdy and a little bit praise. And we'll get old Chipper stirred up, ready to bring what he has for us today. Father, we praise your name. You're worthy. You're awesome. You're great. And you're almighty. You are the exalted one, the risen one, the undefeated one, the champion, the heavyweight, super heavyweight, champion of the universe, never lost a battle, undefeated undisputed king of kings and lord of lords and we praise you and thank you that we are your sons and your daughters and we are part of that eternal kingdom we're a part of that everlasting covenant we exercise our dominion we remind satan you say say you're under our feet you're under our feet and you shall stay there in jesus name welcome holy spirit Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the fire of God to fall on this place and that you stir up the gift of God that's within the man of God. And we thank you for the anointing that's upon the, on the word and the anointing that's upon our eyes and our ears and our hearts to receive. To receive, say, I receive everything God has for me this evening. In Jesus' name, Coach. Yes. Come coach us, sir. Praise God. Amen. All right. You may be seated. That was great. Man, you, if, you, if you ever preach, you want prayer before you preach, trust me. Um, you know, I, was, I told him something, and I want you all to, to not focus on something. Because I put on meetings, pastors have put on meetings, and you want the place to be jam-packed, right? I mean, you just want that. You want people to hear and all that. But I heard something. I was talking to Jackie at lunch today, and I heard something from Jeremy Pearson's a long time ago, and he said the Lord told him, he said, it's not about the number in attendance. It's about the number in agreement. And he heard that from God. And then I started thinking about God on how he did these mighty things like with Gideon. And I remember how it, with David, and they wouldn't take, in Joshua, they wouldn't take everybody. And not all of them would go. But um, they would win the battle, and David would come home with the spoils, and he'd say, bless them too. You know. And they got mad at him. He said, no, nah, they'll bless them too. So... The others will get blessed, but don't you want to be in the battle? Don't you want to be up front? Don't you want to not hear about what happened and you were there? And so feel good about you're here. Get into agreement with what's being said. And um, let's, uh, let's, let's finish, or not finish, but continue this all-in message how God gave it to me. Now, we've been talking about drawing near, right? We talked about. Um, your shield and buckler, but drawing near, and, and when God says, you draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you, you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you, and there's going to be what? A meeting. And that meeting is, you're going to abide in him, and he's going to abide in you. And that's where it is. That's the meeting that we're looking for. And when you have this meeting, you, it changes you. It, it changed Jackie. I don't, I don't know how many knew him before. I didn't, but he was telling me some of his testimony, and he said, I just changed. Like, one day I was another man the next day. I, I was different, and that was the same way with me. I changed because we had that meeting. You had a meeting with love. 
You had a meeting with, you realize love, God has no fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. I mean, it, it just changes your perspective on everything. And so recently I was in California and uh, they called me out there because they really got, this church got real a hold of this all in message. And so they went after it, man. And they did classes and they had a graduation and they did all of this. And it was a lot of fun. And uh, it was like a banquet setting and had me come out and speak at the end of it. And, and uh, they completed this challenge that they had. And, and you know, I, 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 I started, it made me started to think about what truly marks an all-in person. Is it a T-shirt that you passed all the credentials? You know, and I wasn't trying to be a Debbie Downer to their deal. I wasn't, trust me. It just got me thinking afterwards. And what, is it a certificate? Is it wristbands? What is it that because we made that commitment that we are all inners and, and you know that we're all inners? Well, Jesus talked about it to his disciples and he explained to them how other people would know. He, he wanted other people to know that, that you are my disciples. He said to them, I want other people to know. So that must have been important to Jesus. Don't you agree? So in other words... Well, did he give them a, a purple sash? Did he give them a purple robe? That would have been easy for people to know. That would have been a real easy way. He didn't give them a T-shirt or a wristband. He didn't give them a certificate in Boston that they could hang on their, their office wall that said they passed all the credentials. Uh, he didn't give them any of these things. The only thing that he said, well, let's find out what he said, John 13, 34 he said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, and that ye also love one another. Is that 30, what's 35? Uh, I must be, I must got the wrong one. But this shall, oh, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. This is that ye have love for one another. This is how all men, so he wanted all men to know, and you could put where my disciples are, all in. Well, why in the world it's love? Why would it not be faith? Well, the Bible says you can have you can have faith to move the mountains, but if you don't have love, you're nothing. And perfect love casts out all fear. And and so wait a minute though. We've been talking about Chip, you went up, God took you to Marblehead, Massachusetts and said, I want this spirit back. Why wouldn't it be the David's mighty men fighting a lion in a pit on a snowy day? Why wouldn't it be that in the face of, of death? Uh, why would it not be faith? Why would it be love? Well, let's go to a couple scriptures here. Now, remember when I talked about you, you uh, God says, you draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. Now, do you realize that's a promise? God will draw near to you. I think we want that. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live with fear. I want to. I, I want what God has. I want the. I want everything He has. I, I want to be. I want to abide in Him, and He abides in me. And when He says that, you can ask anything you want, and it'll be given unto you. When, when, when you're, you have this meeting. Now, let's look at 1 John. Look at this. And, and this is in the uh, Amplify. In this union and, uh, and communion with him, so th in this meeting, right, love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him because as he is, so are we in this world. There's no fear in love. Dread does not exist but full grown, somebody say full grown. full grown. That means there's half grown or there's some grown or baby, adult, teenager, infant. But full grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out the door. It kicks fear right out the door and it expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment and so who he is afraid has not reached the full maturity. 
So who, who is afraid has not yet reached this full maturity, has not had this communion, this meeting with him. So he's not grown in the complete perfection, which means uh, maturity. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates, detests his brother in Christ, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he's seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this command, somebody say command, command, charge, order, injunction, we have from him that he who loves God shall love his brother believer also. So think about it. Does this love that he's talking about, does it exist in us? Do we have it? If you're born again, is there any born again people in here? Then the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now watch this, the Holy Ghost, right? And so it, it's like we draw this. We, it's, it's, it's like drawing near to God. It's like drawing from a well, and it's drawing it up and drawing it up and, until it's full completion. And, um, and then something changes. Now, a, a people would ask mom, because we can tell you as her kids the day everything changed with mom, and I told you on Sunday that chili story where dad said, this don't taste like mama's chili. Well, mama didn't like that, her flesh, but she was learning from the word from Brother Hagen that love, she was learning about what we're talking about. If you're going to be my disciples, then I want all men to know. Well, what's that mean? Your husband. Are y'all with me? Billy, I want your husband to know that you're one of my disciples. How? That you love me. And so instead of yelling back at him, she was learning this. She went over to the, you know, the cabinet and opened it up. And she had these little five-by-seven cards that says, love is not touchy, love is not. And she would read that. And, and she would draw to that. And so... Uh, she said, well, I'll call your mama and get her recipe and make you a new batch of chili. Well, she didn't want to do that in the natural. Her flesh didn't want to do that. And uh, he said, no, it'll be fine. And so mom didn't have crackers, so she made cornbread. And it was really good cornbread. Mom's a good cook. And dad said, man, I like crackers with my chili. I don't, why do we have cornbread? And so mom walked back over there. Opened it up, and she, it, like drawing it out of a well, drawing it. And, and then she went over that word again because that buckler, that life, that truth. And instead of getting in an argument and preaching at him like she used to do, and that wasn't working. And then he, she says, well, I'll go get you some crackers. And she didn't want to, but I'm going to do it. That's what love would do. Love is not just hearing. Love is doing. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That means you did something. That's not just going to church. That means you're a doer of the word. So love is something you do. And Jesus wants people to know that you're his disciples and you're all in by your love. You're different. That's what he wants. That's what we're going to come to that judgment seat. And that, did, you do it? did you do it? That's our commandment. Remember, we said command. It wasn't a suggestion. And then he said, well, don't you get some coffee on the way, you know, while you're there? And on the way there, she gets there and, and has that moment. She has that meeting is what I call it. And she said, I don't know how to explain it. And for years as a kid, I didn't know what she was talking about until it happened to me. She had a meeting. She continued to draw and draw and draw and draw from the word and the truth and abide and do it. And she had this meeting and it was in her car. She said, its presence filled the car. She said, there was nothing like it. There's, you, you just can't explain it to somebody who's never experienced that. You know, it's time to experience yeah. Manifest, experience, taste it, see it. Instead of just, 
you know, it's good to learn and get knowledge. And, but, man, we need to start experiencing this stuff. And uh, it changed her. It changed her. When she came home with all the boxes of crackers and cans of coffee, she wanted a blessing. Us kids saw a different mama. We saw the real mom that God created. And it changed us. And it changed dad. Everybody on dad's side of the family wasn't saved. They got saved. It, 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 that's, that was the power of it. So what do people see? Are they seeing this? That's the mark of an all-in person today. And so when I had my, um, you know, I'll try to tell my, my, when it happened to me without getting real long, I was coaching and we had won our third state championship in high school. And uh, all of a sudden, I get this call in from the principal and the board of directors and everything else. And they said, uh, you have been accused of uh, illegal recruiting, and there's going to be a hearing 30 days from now. And uh, nobody's ever won that hearing to this day. And uh, that means you're going to lose your job. And, and, And so... They, they don't take anonymous, but if somebody's going to be there, they'll take it seriously. And, and, and I'm all about that. I'm not for illegal recruiting. And it was such a joke because we worked so hard. I was running people off. Hardly could have a team. But anyway, and I, and I got really mad. Now, I'm born again and uh, spirit-filled and pay my tithes, and, but I got mad because these people who are jealous, are going to try to take my job away from me. So I slammed my fist on uh, the principal's desk, said, who are they? And they said, we don't know. We won't know until the hearing. And I said, you're telling me in 30 days I'm losing my job because some people made up a lie, and I have worked this hard for what we did. He said, yeah, that's the way it works. It shouldn't work that way, but that's the way it works. And I'm, I'm sure there were some that have been guilty, but I wasn't, in case you're wondering. <laughs> and so Mama hears about it. It gets on the news. How would, you like your, how would you like for you to be on all the news on the both front pages of the, the big-time papers, you know, of Brim Cheats for titles? And, uh, and then your wife's getting treated wrong, your kids are getting treated wrong, and everybody just believes what they read. And it was all a lie. Now, I didn't know that I'm going to one day be a preacher or a pastor or be in Dilly, Texas <laughs> on a Tuesday night, right? I have no idea about that, but God does. And, uh, and I'm mad. And I wanted to kill them. I wanted to find out who they were and kill them. And then repent. That was my plan. (laughs) But that wasn't God's plan. And uh, so mama calls me. Now this is the mama that I saw as a kid change. Are y'all with me? And she said, Chip. I heard about it on the news, and uh, there's only one way you can win this court case. I said, Mama, nobody's ever won this court case. She said, I don't care if 100,000, million, billion, gazillion, trillion have never won it. She said, love never fails. Do you know the Bible says love never fails? Well, that's God. God is love. I don't know about you, but I'd want to abide in that. Because in him and in that meeting, that's where there is no fear. That's where you live victoriously. And I said, Mama, I can't. and she said, here's what you got to do. She said, you got to pray for those who persecute you. That's what the Bible says to do. Pray for them. I said, I can't pray for them. I hate them. Y'all are looking real holy right now. <laughs> well, I mean, you just look like you would never do that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But I can promise you there are Christians, maybe even in here, who don't like people or hate people. 
But he, she said, I, no, the Bible says you pray for I said, Mom, I can't do it. She, she goes, well, then you're not going to win this case. And I said, well, she said, there's three things you got. I said, well, what's number two? She goes, I ain't going to tell you the second one if you don't do the first one. So I, I lied to her and said, I'll, I'll do it. And she said, now, the second thing is you've got to pray in the Spirit like you've never prayed in the Spirit because you don't know how to pray. This is a court case for y'all that had just walked in that, that was against me that nobody had ever won. And I said, well, I can pray in the Spirit. And uh, she said, the third thing is, anytime a fear or tries to come on you, you just say out of your mouth, no weapons formed against me shall prosper. That's speaking the truth. And so my first prayer for these people, when I have 30 days for that court hearing, to them to take my job away from me, even though I'm not guilty, is Lord, bless them. That's it. That was it. Well, later the Lord said, at least you didn't curse them. That was a start. And then I went immediately into praying in the Spirit. And I'm praying in the Spirit. Days go by. Days go by. Weeks go by. Now I'm two weeks in. I got two weeks until the... I'm, I'm praying in the Spirit all the time. And and, and on the outside, the noise is louder. They're trying to get interviews with you in your front lawn and, and throwing eggs. Out. I mean, it's, it's just terrible, and it's all a lie. And I'm praying in the Spirit, just praying in the Spirit. <clears throat> but I'm going to tell you something. When I was praying, I, and, and that was a good thing, I, I, I had fear still. I had fear of losing my job. And what am I going to do? How am I going to feed my family? What am I going to do? It's all I know how to do is coach. And then, as I'm praying about in the second week, all of a sudden something hits me, and it was the same thing that hit mom in that car. And it was the presence of God. It happened. He didn't give me. Listen, mom did it through the word. Mine came through praying in the spirit. Well, however way it is, you're drawing near to him. There's going to be a meeting. And I had that meeting. And I stood up. Five seconds ago, I hated them. And I'm praying in the Spirit. And it hit me. And the presence filled my room that I was in. And I said, God, I could see different. I could see like he could see. And I said, God, you love them. God, you want all men saved. This is coming out of my mouth. Lord, they may not be saved. All of a sudden, my job was not even in my thought process. Why? Because perfect love cast out fear. All of a sudden, fear is gone. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I wasn't praying that fear left, but perfect love cast it out. It kicked it out the door. All of a sudden, I have no more fear of losing my job. And then I had two weeks of truly praying and blessing them. And I couldn't wait until we had this, this, this hearing so I could see them, hopefully hug them. <laughs> Brother Hagen said, there's a way you can tell if you have this or not. You love those who hate you. Oh, it's easy to love those who love you. But loving those who hate you, you're looking through flash eyes. I mean... You know, I, I don't know where I was going with that, but flesh-wise, there's no possible way you can love people who hate you. But in God, that's Jesus on the cross, are y'all listening to me? He said, forgive them, for they don't even know what they're doing. How could somebody say that? Love. He would go off away from his disciples and make sure and draw near to God and abide in him. And so that's why I'm telling you, and Jesus says, this is the love that people are going to be able to tell that you're my disciple, that you're on my team, that you wear my jersey. And so we went there, and, and it came out where we won the case. And it was amazing how it happened. Uh, but to this day, in that state, 
It's the only one that's won it. They say it every year. Every year they'll say that court case of Brim in 1998, I think it was, is the only one that ever won it. Undefeated. God, love is undefeated. Man. So, glory to God. That is what happened. Brother Hagen had this. He had this. You know, a lot of people said, well, he was a man of faith, taught faith, and father of faith, you know, and teaching us faith. And, and he was, but man, if you ever read his books, it was, your faith does nothing without love. He hired mom as his editor when they started Rama. So Rama was just a couple of people. And when it started, there's a story about him that mom told me. She said, Chip, we didn't have social media back in those days. But if you're going to call it social media, the social media we had was if Oral Roberts said something from the platform or on TV, the Christians would hear it. Or there was another TV evangelist that had a big uh, following. I'm not going to tell you his name. And if he said it on TV. And if it was written in a book or in a certain magazine. That would be what you call back then Christian social media. And people believed what they read. Well, there was a man who was a professor at Oral Roberts University who wrote a book, and the book was about Brother Hagen, and he claimed that he was a false prophet, and the book goes out. And this television evangelist gets a hold of this book, and he believes it, and he says it, not oral, and he says it. Then the magazine gets a hold of it, and they print it. And it's out there in the Christian world that Brother Hagin's a false prophet. So today it would be like, think about it, Twitter, Facebook, all the news, and you're a false prophet. You're wrong. Everybody. And it could, just, it could just ruin you because people believe what they read. And... Mama said, we had a meeting with him at 11 o'clock that, that next day after all this kind of had hit the fan, and we were wondering what he was going to say, and he walks in there, and they're all, what are we going to do? We don't even know if we're going to have a job. Is this ministry folded or what? And he goes in there, and he sits down, and he twiddles his thumbs, and he's looking up in the air. He's got a smile. He's not even there. And they're all with their pads going, what are we going to do? We don't know what to do. We're beside ourselves right now. Haven't you heard the news? What are we going to do? You know, I can remember another time where somebody was coming out giving news, and his name was Goliath. And he would give the news every day. And Israel was beside themselves. Oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? I see the church acting this way now because of what they hear. What are we going to do? What's our country going to do? What are we going to do? And Brother Hagin goes, he opens his mouth up. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Rocks back in his chair. They're all like, yeah, but what are we going to do? He's so wonderful. He said, man, let's just get up and just praise him how wonderful he is. Well, they get up, dude. Just... This is the difference between somebody who was there. Are you with me? Who had had that meeting. Who was, who was living that disciple role. Amen. And he said, let's do what the Bible, what would the Bible tell us to do? Well, the Bible would tell us to pray for them. So we started, they started praying for them. Well, why would you pray? You got every right to go against them. I mean, they're trying to ruin your ministry. Did you know, and just a month later, that man who wrote the book died of a severe, massive heart attack. And he wasn't even sick, ill, or old. It wasn't God doing it. It's the enemy allowed in there. 
that TV evangelist that spread the news, his ministry crashed on national television. That magazine went out of business. And Rama exploded. To this day, he's in heaven and Rama is all around the world. That wasn't God. Are y'all understanding what we're talking about? Isn't Jesus wonderful? And I think about that. David didn't have any. What I'm trying to say is, Brother Hagin didn't have any fear. What am I going to do about my ministry? I work so hard. God! He had no fear. Why? Because perfect love cast out fear. And he draws near. And you're going to have that meeting. David had no fear. Right? So if we're constantly beside ourselves, man, let's experience the love of God. Let's experience absolutely no fear. And continue to abide and go after God. Amen? Amen? This love that we're talking about is different. It's not a supernatural love. It's not a love that you can, it can only come from God. It's the presence of God. How do we, how do we know we have it? Brother, H- Brother Hagin said, one clue is you'll, you'll love everybody. You'll love everybody who even hates you. And I experienced that. Trust me, because I was born again spirit-filled and I hated them. And I'm telling you right now, there's Christians in here that may hate some family members or in-laws or or church members or pastors or bosses or co-workers or or, or principals or athletes or coaches or celebrities or whatever. And a big one, politicians. Cricket, cricket. But why is all in love and not faith? Faith, think about it. Faith is... It's impossible to please God without it. Think about it, it, it. We're saved by faith. Think about we're healed by the prayer of faith. Think about, man, this is pretty important. But the Bible says that we can have the faith to move mountains and no love, you're nothing. And by the way, the very last verse of that says, now abide in faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is what? Love. Now, watch this. I love it because Jesus came to bring us the truth, grace and truth, and he would bring it. Now, first, uh, let's go to John 1.17. Let's look at this verse right here real quick. This sets it up. John 1.17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. That's John 1.17, by the way. All right? Is it up there? Okay. Uh, yeah, that one's King James, but we'll go on. That's no big deal. All right. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, remember truth, came by Jesus Christ. Now Jesus, listen to me, brought the truth. Do you know what I'm talking about, bringing it? He bring, he bring it. He would bring it. I mean, he would bring it. He would bring it to those who only knew the law. And he's bringing them this new truth. Now, y'all are hearing some things like, hey, love your neighbor, love your enemies, love those who persecute you. You don't know what I'm going. Oh, he, G, watch this. Are y'all ready? Matthew 5, 43. Here we go. This is Jesus bringing it. And I mean, he would bring it. I get so tickled at this where I found these places where he'd bring it. Now, he's talking to the Sadducees here, and he says, you have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And they'd all go, yeah, yes, that's the law. All right, amen. But I say, this is bringing it, love your enemy. (laughs) Now, think about that room, how quiet it got. But I say, now that's bringing it, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as a true children of your Father in heaven or all inners. That's the way that his, that's his children, how they act. 
For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and good. He sends rain on the just and unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is for that? I'm telling you, well done, my good and faithful servant, is going to be how you operated in love. Even corrupt tax collectors can do that. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anybody else? You're supposed to be different. Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect. That means mature. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Love never fails. Now, watch this. Matthew 22. We're going to skip down a little bit. He's going to bring it some more. Now, watch this. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, we just read that part. He went in there and he brought it. And what happened to them? Jaws just dropped. You want us to love our enemies? You want us to love our enemies? That's how God's children act? And it was cricket, cricket. So if you ever wondered if Jesus preached and it was crickets, absolutely. <laughs> and he left there. And so... When the Pharisees heard this, they had, that he had put the Sadducees to silence. How? By bringing the truth. They gathered together around him. And then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him. That actually translates tricking him. I'm going to test him, trick him, try him, trick him up, trip him up. What you're saying? And say unto the master, which is the great commandment in the law, master? <laughs> and what he's talking about is the law had 613 laws to it. And they would memorize and pray these prayers and laws five times a day. And so Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Now, now the King James says soul and mind. But that can't be the proper translation because soul and mind are the same thing. So you go back to where he said it, and that's Deuteronomy 6, and it says, he, actually what he said was, love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, and your might. And the Hebrew word for might is resources. In other words, you love him with everything you've got. Nothing has you. Your money, your vehicles, your home, nothing. You love him with everything you got. This is the first and great what? Suggestion. And the second is unlike it, is just like it, tied with it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang all those laws and the prophets. Brother Copeland saw me preach this on TV and he texts me and calls me and says, did you realize that he answered, he answered even further what he asked? He only asked about the law. He didn't ask about the prophets. He only asked about the law, which is the great commandment in the law. He said, well, I'll tell you, love God with everything you've got. Don't let anything, I mean, you love him first. And then love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two hang all the law and the prophets. And what Jesus was saying, this is what Brother Copeland said, he wasn't just saying, he was talking about everything that the law and Moses brought and everything that the prophets prophesied that he's going to bring and the new, everything from the beginning in the Old Testament to the ending in the New Testament, all throughout eternity, everything hangs on these two. Your, y'all ain't listening to me. Your healing hangs on it. Your healing hangs on it. Brother Hagin used to say, you ain't got your healing yet. Oh, you better check your love walk out. You better check your love walk. You ain't got your job yet. You ain't got that what you're believing yet. You better check your, because everything hangs on it. Everything. Hangs on what? Love God with everything you got. And love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. This is Jesus bringing it now. 
Your prosperity, your peace, your joy, your marriage, your everything, your business hangs on it. Hangs on love. Now, you, here's Jesus bringing it some more. Y'all ready? Mark eleven twenty three. Y'all ever heard that one? Truly I tell you. Now, wait a minute. We just kind of pass over that word truly. What do we learn about truth? It's your shield and buckler. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? In other words, when he says, truly, I, I'm bringing the truth. Here comes the truth. Whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up. Now, think about this. He, he, he's there, and, and I've been there. I don't know if you've been to Israel, but he would use whatever was in his sight as his teaching. And here it would be oil wells and cows, ropes horses, tumbleweeds. <laughs> but that's what he would use. And he would say, surely anyone, and that was the biggest thing he could find. Right. Whoever says this mountain be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart but believes what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe, trust, be confident that it is granted to you and you'll get it. And when you, now, now that's 23 through 24. But now here comes 25. Now what's the first word of 25? The very first word. What's that mean? Is he done talking? Do you leave there? And... Now, how many want to speak to whatever mountain's in front of them and it leave? We all want that, right? Is it possible if he said it? So if it's a mountain of sickness or poverty or whatever it might be, okay. But, and, but, but here, 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 it's got some qualifications to it. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against What's anything? <laughs> Who's anyone? I know, God, but they're, uh, they're, they're, they're falsely accusing me. Are y'all with me? I'm not guilty. You know I'm not guilty. I didn't illegally recruit. If you have anything against anything, Anyone, you can't come after anything and anyone and go, well, well, but. Here's my situation. Now watch this, because if this is you, that's not going to work where you speak to that mountain and it removes. Forgive him and let it drop. Leave it. And let it go. In order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you of your own failings and shortcomings. Don't you want him to let them drop? Of your shortcomings? That's the legal way and just way of how it works in God's kingdom. And so Mama said, this verse right here, because we're reading now the Amplified. We, the church has gotten better at forgiving but they're still not good in the leaving. Are y'all hearing this? Now watch this. If you have anything against anyone, what? Say number one, forgive him. Number two, let it drop. Number three, leave it and let it go. You got to leave it. Some of her are still there. You're still hanging around. You're still meditating. Oh, I forgave him. Are y'all, you see what I'm talking about? And my mom is a professional lever. She will not let you bring anything even up because she will grab hands and make you pray for the ones you're bringing up that you want to talk about. And you don't want to pray for them. Are y'all understanding what I'm talking about? She'll go, son, I can tell right now there's something right here, but, but you don't even know. They may have gotten on their knees and gotten forgiveness. You need to, you need to lead us in a prayer for them. Oh. Y'all see what I'm talking about? 
that's a, that's a disciple of God right there. That's a, that's a disciple of Christ right there. And I got to witness her changing, and then it happened in my life. And this is for everybody. This is for everybody. And we, we go to these conferences and read these books on how to get rid of fear. Listen, love. kicks fear out the door. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about this relationship with God. You draw near to me, I draw near to you, and it happens. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. You know, I had a, uh, it's a, I was just looking at the time. Now, I know I've told this before, but that drop, stop, drop, and run part uh, yeah, the monkeys. Some of y'all might remember that. But I, uh, things were, the devil was having his way in my life and my ministry and my health and finances and, and, and my prayers weren't being answered and nothing was happening and we had just moved into this neighborhood and, and it had a covenant. Y'all know what a covenant is in a neighborhood? It's the developer, he buys that and he, he has the houses, but he's got rules. You're, you can only paint your house this color and you only have your grass, has got to be per, blah, 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 blah. And there's these covenant rules in these real nice neighborhoods. And, uh, and so I was going to build a basketball court in the backyard for my daughter. Well, I didn't know that it was, your, it was in the covenant that you couldn't do that. So the developer who... Uh, in Republic, Missouri, that's where it was, is actually Satan himself. <laughs> if you want to know him in, in real life, that's, he's a developer of a certain neighborhood. <laughs> and he comes to our backyard and he chews me out, cusses me. I mean, he gets in my face. He, uh, he wanted me to hit him. He wanted me to, he wanted to sue me. And he, he, in front of my wife, and man, my old flesh was, and, uh, and so my wife grabbed me, and I went in there, and I had communion and prayed for him, and that was that. It got so bad that things were going wrong, I started growing mushrooms in my front yard, and, and, it, and it wasn't normal. So we would have these people who did lawn care, and they'd come over and said, oh, we'll spray, they'll be gone, and they sprayed them, and it was like a steroid to them yeah and people are coming by looking at them and no other lawn has them I walked for three blocks I thought maybe it was a fungus that was caused by whatever nobody has them but my yard now y'all may think this is I'm telling you it was like locusts what's next you know frogs what's next and and nothing was happening and, and this set me free it set me free and I said, I got to get an answer from God because everything's wrong. And, I, and, and, and so my wife took the kids to her mom's for a weekend, and I said, I'm just going to 24-7 get on my face, and I'm getting an answer. And when she left, there was this book, and it was by Larry Allison. You should get this book. It's great. And it's Breaking the Cycle of Offense. Breaking Offense. And it's got these two hands that are like handcuffed and you're breaking it. You've got to break this thing. It's been over you for generations. And it may be poverty, it may be sickness, it may be whatever. But the devil operates there. You can break that. And this is when I broke it. And um, so I'm reading it. And it says, have you stumbled? Is the devil having his... Yeah, I'm like, yes, check. Yes, 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 yes. And it says, well, then you're offended. I'm not offended. I, I set the book down and said, I'm not offended. I'm not offended. And I thought, well, it, everything else, I, I'm going to read through it. And I read about how the word offense is the Greek word scandalon. And it's the same word in the Greek for offense. So if you're stumbling, and it's also the same word for Stumbling. So in other words, what the author of this book was teaching us was, if there's stumbling going on, listen to me now, everybody listen to me. If there's stumbling, like you're not growing, whether it be health, finances, or anything, 
if they're stumbling, there's offense. And a Greek, Rick Ritter, Greek scholar, told me, he said, you can't separate them. If they're stumbling, there will be offense. If you're offended, if you're offended at somebody, get ready. Get ready because you're going to stumble. You do not separate those words. Jesus said, remember when Peter denied him? He said, get behind thee, Satan. Remember what he said next? For you are an offense to me. You are trying to trip, you're trying to trap me. And that word scandalon means bait stick. It actually means a trap. Satan uses it as a trap. But man, if you operate love and love your enemy and love your neighbor and you bless those, he, he can't trap you. But otherwise he can trap you. And he'll use different bait sticks to trap you. So I'm in, I'm in Australia and, and this guy shows me this documentary of these natives with these monkeys and I guess they're still like this today and they would go out to hunt these monkeys but the monkeys were on the higher levels and so they couldn't they couldn't reach them on the level they were at and so they would set traps on the jungle floor and they would dangle a bait stick now remember scandalon means bait stick offense means bait stick in Greek if Satan could get you he and and they, would, they set the cameras up, you know, overnight, with the infrared, all of that. And, and they, they, the monkeys would come down and stick their little hands in there and grab that stick. And they would try to pull it out. But they couldn't pull it out. And I don't know if y'all have ever raccoon hunt or anything like that. or Raccoon's the same way, but they won't let go. If, if, there was nothing that hurt them. If they let go, actually, their hand would come out of the trap. But they wouldn't. And the next morning as the natives would rise early and go check the traps, every trap had a monkey. And y'all are looking at me right now, all holy, and you guys got one here, here, and here. <laughs> and you know it was funny that they didn't talk about that I saw? The natives would approach them with their clubs because they're going to beat them, eat them whatever they do with them. And those monkeys would yell louder, thinking that would help them. I say, and we pray louder. You know what I mean? Thinking that's going to help. God! The whole time we're trapped. Jesus says, you're an offense to me, Satan. You're trying to trap me. But I don't get offended. And he knew it wasn't Peter, it was the devil. It's not that person, it's not your boss. It's not your developer, who I could have swore it was. <laughs> and I read this book and I said, Lord, and I see that documentary and he said, yeah, but what about that conversation you had the next day with your best, you know, I had a, my, one of my best friends is Rocky Clark, he's a basketball coach. And he, had, he said, how's that developer? And I, well, I said, well, I forgive him. And, you know, he needs the Lord. And he, <laughs> You see what I'm saying? But I said, I forgave him. You know what the Lord showed me? He said, you forgave him, but you didn't, you didn't let it go. You, you may have let it go, but you didn't leave it. And I said, show me a verse in the Bible where it says, right there, it says, he showed me the monkey verse right there. Put 25 back up, if you would, amplify. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against him, forgive him, let it drop. But that monkey better, if he only lets it drop and doesn't leave, he's still in trouble because he's meditating on it. Are y'all with me? He's meditating on it. They still did you wrong. You're meditating on it. Are y'all with me? No, he's got to go. What would happen if one monkey in this jungle, wherever this is at, got the revelation let go, and runs. Takes the first vine out of there. He's back at the treetops giving his testimony. Other trees of jungle family, of, of monkey families ask him to come speak. And so now he, he, 
and he's got a book table, and he's selling shirts, stop, drop, and run. Taste and see that the jungle is good. You can live and not die. All of our relatives have died, but you don't have to. Would that be an awakening in that jungle? Would things change? See, that's a level that they were supposed to be operating on in the first place, but they came down. That's the level we're supposed to Satan's trying to draw you down and get you on his level and trap you. And so I get a hold of this thing, and I said I didn't let it go. And I call mom, and she goes, yep, people have a problem of leaving it. They forgive them, but they don't leave it. You got to leave it. And I said, I'm leaving it once and for all. I called Rocky, and man, him and I got the communion out. And I mean, it was, I was free. I felt it. I got my answer. I got my answer. And as soon as I'm like, glory to God, the doorbell rings. Ding dong. And, and the Bible says, the enemy will come immediately. You can't get much more immediate than, praise God, ding dong. And I go to my front door. I'm light as a feather. I'm free. I got the answer, the revelation. Oracles of heaven have spoken to. I'm a, and it's him. I can see we had glass on the sides of the door. And it's him. It's Satan. Almost like he was a bait stick. Grab me. You know, not really. You want to talk about a test? This was a test. It's only a test. <laughs> do I pass this test or not? Do I really let it go or do I not? And I'm not going to tell you it was easy. And there's going to be people in your life you need to let it go. Do you understand? It's, it's hindering your prayers being answered. It's hindering victory in your life. And some of you may not even know. I didn't know. And I had forgiven him, but I hadn't let it go. Well, here comes the trap again. Okay, devil, I see how you are. So I opened the door and I said, hey. And he goes, you need to, and I mean, he beeps. I'm just going to put beeps where words were. You know what I'm talking about curse words. You need to beep the beep your beeping long, mushrooms is what he said. You need to mow your mushrooms. <laughs> he was trying to stir me up. And I said, I'm, I'm working on that. And I'm sitting there. And out of my mouth came, I just, can I tell you something? He goes, what? What do you got to say? I said, I want to I want to thank you. And I remember in my mind going, for what? <laughs> I'm having two different, my mind's going, for what? Well, just work with me. I, <laughs> and it was funny because you know that we're a spirit that has a soul, that has a body, flesh. And, and there was a battle going on, and my spirit man was taking over, pushing my flesh out. I want to thank you because. <laughs> and my mind has nothing. <laughs> because. Because you have this covenant. And because you have this covenant, it helps us keep our property good. And our value of our homes won't go down. It started becoming real to me. This was like the Holy Spirit was helping me with this. And when I resell this property because of your covenant and because we have the best uh, developer in the world, trying to high-five him and he won't, you... I'm, I mean, it just rose out of me. It was like, this is fun. 
And I wasn't doing it sarcastically. I was loving this guy who I hated and telling him how good he is. He had never been told he was good. Nobody liked him. Everybody hated him. And I said, and I did. When we sold that house, we made a lot of money. We made a lot of money. <laughs> and I was telling him that, and I said, and then I just went for it. I, I, I come from a hugging mother, and I went for it, and I went for a hug. And it was like hugging an icebox, you know. <laughs> and I'm even getting into it. I'm, I'm doing this. And, and when I let him down, no, I, I did pick him up. <laughs> he jumps off my porch and gets in his truck and almost caused a wreck. And I'm like, I'm free. It was the first time I did Mark eleven twenty five. 25. Are y'all with me? I let it go. And my kids and wife came home, and the next morning they woke me up, and there wasn't a mushroom in the yard. I'm not talking about laying down dead. I'm talking about vanished. The kid that was sick was healed. The ministry, the finite money, all of a sudden prayers were being answered. Because I let it go. I didn't hang on to it, even though I told him I forgave him. Everything hangs on it. Are y'all with me? And did you know, you know, my plan was on him as well is I wanted to deck him and then pray for him. <laughs> that was my plan. And the power of God healed him and then he gets born again. <laughs> but God had a different plan. And a week later he comes by and he says, you know that he comes by. And he's not looking at me. He says, what do you do? I said, well, I'm, I'm a preacher. What do you mean? Well, I was in baseball, and it's motivational speaking, but I add the word of God. He goes, you know that basketball court, forget that rule. Go ahead and build it. He said, I'll help you build it. So he comes and helps me build it. And as we're building it, he gets born again. That was God's plan. My plan. But that doesn't, that, there's no victory there. Are y'all with me or not? Stop, drop, and run. Leave it. How do I leave it? Somebody tries to bring it back. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You don't even know if they, they've already got forgiveness. I'm telling you, that's holding some of y'all up. It's holding you some. Now, let, let, let's look at this one. We'll, start, we'll, we'll end with this one. John 15. Oh, this one's kind of long. I might want to read this. John 15, 7. And lunch is what brought this up. I don't know if, it, did you remember me saying, I need to add that tonight? And it was the Lord because what we were talking about. Now, everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Say, this is in red. Jesus is speaking. If ye abide in me. No, you don't have to go there. <laughs> and my words abide in you. You shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done for you. Now, Lord, herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. It glorifies God. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now continue in what? And if you keep my commandments, and we know his commandment is love, you shall abide in my what? Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full so that in my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you greater love now he's bringing it now hath no man than this 
that a man lay down his life for his friends. Because why? He did. Ye are my friends. What's the next word? Oh, man, we need to have a sermon on ifs and ands. You know it? I am a friend of God if, yeah, if, because I, I sing this song so well, I am a friend of God if, let's read it. Where is it? What verse is that? 14. You are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Jackie Stevenson. And, by the way, Jackie, I've ordained you. That's the verse that changed his life. He heard that. Was it over here? Was it in, or where was it? Oh, Bible at home. You have not chosen me. I've chosen you. He's talking to every one of y'all. And I've ordained you. Well, if he ordained you, you're anointed. You're qualified that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. How do you bring forth fruit? By, by victory, by winning. Well, what, net, what always wins? Love. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, look what he, how he ends it, that you love one another. I was asking God. I was, I, I was preaching. I was in the ministry. I was Billy's boy. When the mushrooms came, when the financial pressures came, when the sickness came. And I'm praying, and, there, and it's not. But he just says, if you ask me. But did you see the condition? In love, under my command. Haven't got your healing yet? Haven't got this yet? Check your love walk out. So what are we going to do? We're going to stop and recognize. Then you're going to drop and you're going to run. Forget stop, drop, and roll. It's stop, drop, and run. Amen? But that's, that's, uh, that, that is the mark of an all-inner. Next time I see you, I know what we're going to be talking about because he's talking to me about it when I'm in San Antonio in my hotel room and he's been, I didn't think that one out too much. That traffic getting here. I may want to stay in Dilly next time. Duh. But uh, he's talking about going all out. Once you go all in, now it's time to go all out. No, oh, there's, I know there's so much to it too. You go all out. What you doing? What are you doing? Is it just going to church? What are you doing? Let's put this thing into action. So that's, December, so that's December. Get ready for it. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, I'm looking at faces, and I know a lot of your names. Put this in operation of what I just told you. And anybody in anything, right, if you have anyone, anything, what I want you to do is I want you to forgive them. I want you to go to God and repent. It could have been a dad who did something terrible to you when you were a child. But it said anything. Are y'all with me? It could have been abuse. It could have been, it could have been an ex-husband who abused you or whatever. Any, anyone, anything. And forgive them. And then what? Let it go. Let it go. Maybe even a thought tries to bring it up. No, glory to God, you say out loud. I let that go, praise God, I bless them. And if that's all you can say is bless them, then just say bless them. Bless and curse not. And that word bless, I preached that here before when Paul said that. 
It's where we get the word uh, eulogy. It's made up of two words, eulogos. You means good and logos means words. Good words only, and it's where they get the word eulogy. So if you've ever been to a funeral, and the guy may not have been that good of a guy, <laughs> and there wasn't much good to talk about, but eulogy means good words only. Brother Hagin said he did a funeral of the, the worst guy in town. He said, well, he had good teeth. <laughs> Didn't he have good teeth? Let's praise God for his teeth. <laughs> but that's where eulogy come from. And when Paul said, bless and curse not. Bless and curse not. I'm telling you, it's easy if you don't, it's something that we've got to practice every day. But this is the mark of an all-inner. Amen? I mean, I preached that one Sunday, and, and, and my son was sitting there listening to me. I didn't realize it, but he was. We drove home from that service of bless and curse not, and I, I evidently cut a guy off in traffic, and he came up to me and, Gave me the bird. And my son peeks over. And he's right with me giving me the bird. And you can read his lips. <laughs> you can read every word he's saying. <laughs> and I just preached blessing, curse not. And I mean, I'm... Bo and then he decides to give me one more bird and floors it to, so that he won that conversation. Well, I floor it with him. <laughs> We're going down the highway at 90, 95. Mm. Hey, buddy, still here. <laughs> I just preached. I just preached it. And I'm boiling. You think you're all bad now? You ain't so bad now, are you? And my son goes, Dad, what? He said, bless him. Huh? <laughs> what? Blood goes, <laughs> I ain't kidding, y'all. He said, you just preached it. Bless him and curse not. He said, Dad, I pull off the road, I pull the shoulder. He may not be born again. He may be headed to hell. He said, Dad, he, he, his family, everything that, he may have kids that don't know. He said, Dad, let's pray for him. Man, I start. And, and he led me in a prayer. And my son is praying for this guy who just flipped off his daddy. And, it, and the presence of God filled that truck. Anything against anyone. But I'm telling you, once you experience it and the freedom and the victory and the fruit we can do more for God. You can do more for God when you're healthy. And you're wealthy. Amen? You can do more for God. These are the all-inners. Not because they came and just said it one night and made a commitment. Uh -uh. Jesus said, go show them now. Go out and show them. You know that one at work that hates you and you don't get along with? Go love him. Pray for him. Pray for him at home and love him. Go bless him. God will help you. If you got to grit your teeth, grit your teeth. God will help you. But I just know that I was supposed to share that tonight because it's holding somebody in here back from the miracle you need or the meeting of God you need. Amen. So will y'all practice this until December? And then I want to hear 
Listen, I told him something last time. I said, you do this on thankfulness, and you're going to have testimony. He came straight, couldn't wait for me to get through the door. I said, man, I got testimony. It'll be the same for you. You will have testimonies after testimonies because you let it go. Let's don't just be forgivers, religious forgivers. That's not good enough. Are y'all with me? Y'all understand that? I've forgiven them. That's not, there's another step. Way to go. But there's another step. Leave it. Don't talk about it. Don't meditate on it. Leave it. Amen? Amen. Did y'all get anything? Yeah. Praise God. Pastor Chewer. Yeah. Hello, hello. So um, I was thinking, um, it's funny. Uh, they asked me to do, a, um, they had a Jordan, my daughter's rope and breakaway at uh, Cowboy Pleasant Church last Thursday. And uh, uh, the man, or the woman asked me to lead the um, devotional. So you, you go to do the devotional, then you rope. And he had me talk about forgiveness. Wasn't my, I had a plan on faith and love, but what is love? But forgiveness. And uh, the biggest thing is this, understand this about, two things about forgiveness I think that we've got to know or be reminded of is uh, just because you forgive them doesn't mean what they did was right. And you forgive them really and truly for your benefit. You get the most out of it. And then also know that forgiveness is not a feeling. If you wait till you feel like forgiving them, it may never happen. Right? It's not a feeling. It's a what? A choice or a decision. It's a decision that you make. Pastor, yeah, Pastor Phil says your feelings will catch up. Your feelings will catch up with you. And is it worth it? Yes. Thank you. You know, you can be all caught up on your forgiveness and then uh, you live another week, <laughs> another day, <laughs> right? I think it's something that we got to stay up on, stay current on. Always be searching our hearts and be, yeah, so thank you. We love you. I want us to stretch your hands towards Chip. Can you stand up? We want to bless him. He's, he's got a lot going on. Uh, and so, Father, we thank you for the gift that you've given Chip. And we thank you that he's a gift to us. And, Father, Thank you for the divine connection. Thank you for placing him not just in my life, but in this church's life. He's in all of our lives. He is our brother. He is an anointed teacher. He's a covenant partner. And we ask you to bless him beyond his wildest dreams and imaginations. We ask you that you bring, give him increase in every area, physically, financially, emotionally, socially, relationally. And for the things that he's believing for, Lord, we believe that they're his. That they're his. And we thank you for blessing his son and his daughter. That they both fulfill the purpose and destiny that you have for them. And thank you for the wonderful heritage that his mother, Billy, has left him. We love him, and we thank you for him. And make sure that you let Candy know, Brother Chip, that we appreciate her sharing you with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glad, good to have all of you tonight. This turned out, I couldn't even know how many were here. This was pretty good for a Tuesday, I think. 
But it's not the numbers, it's the ones that are in agreement. And what is agreement? Is unity. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't, right? Because we're a part of a trial.